So this week we got some exciting news from Tesla. Tesla finally released a full self-driving option in subscription form, which now makes the full self-driving option a lot more attainable for a lot of people. So I'm suspecting there's gonna be a lot more Tesla owners out there that go ahead and take the plunge and give full self-driving a try. Now, I have had full self-driving since I purchased my car back in November of 2020. And at the time that I purchased my car, it was $8,000, not the $10,000 today. And I will be the first to admit that some of the full self-driving features aren't that apparent or aren't that obvious. And I thought I would just go into what full self-driving is and how it works and how you access it and what it does and what it doesn't do. So if you go to Tesla's site, they give you a list of everything that the full self-driving capability can do. Now, before I get into what it can do, I'm going to get into what it can't do, which is at the very bottom of the list. And it is what has been catching most of the media attention lately with the full self-driving version 9 beta, and that is city street driving. Now, when you get this subscription, you are not getting that. That is still very much a limited beta, and that beta is open to a select few people in the country. I am not one of them. I would love to have it, but I don't have it. So if you're expecting to get city street driving when you hit that subscription purchase, you're going to be disappointed. But there are a number of features that it can do, and some of them are pretty exciting, and in my opinion, some of them are still not quite baked yet. So let's go through the list on what full self-driving capability really is, how you make it work, and how well it works. And the first one on the list is something that everybody likes to talk about, which is Navigate on Autopilot. Navigate on Autopilot is very similar to the built-in Autopilot with one big difference, which is you have to enter in a destination. And once you enter in a destination, if you are going on certain types of roads, it will do some of that navigation for you. It will, when it's enabled, take on-ramps and off-ramps. And it doesn't work everywhere. That's one of the things that a lot of people I've seen on Facebook and other forums say is, how do I turn this on? It is only active when it is able to be active. And from my experience, it is interstates and some four-lane highways, but not all of them. And you'll notice that it's working when you enter your destination at the top of the screen, you'll see a navigate on autopilot button and select that to, to make it blue and blue is actually active and white is not that feels backwards to me. So to enable navigate on autopilot, you actually have to enter in a destination. And if that destination takes you on the certain type of road that works with navigate on autopilot, it will give you an indication on the screen. And once you've started on your journey, you have to still put it into regular autopilot. If you're on a road that enables navigate on autopilot, your double blue line that's usually surrounding your car, you'll get a chime, it'll move to a single blue line down the center. And what that gives you is exit ramps and on ramps on certain types of roads. And for me, that feature is kind of meh um, because I find that it often takes these on ramps and off ramps at the wrong speed or at least the speed that I don't want to go. But the next feature I find with full self driving is the gold feature of full self driving, and that is auto lane change. And you can be an autopilot on any four lane road. You don't have to be navigating on autopilot. And if you want to change lanes to get around slower traffic, all you do is turn on the turn signal and autopilot will use the cameras that are all around the car to know when it is safe to get over. And there's a kind of a cool animation on the screen that shows you exactly what's happening. Now, if you flip all the bells and whistles in Navigate on Autopilot, if you are navigating on Autopilot, you can have it change lanes for you. And I took a big 3,200 mile road trip all around the country. And for the first half of that trip, I had it change the lanes for me. And I ultimately 
turned it off to just say, suggest a lane change. And the reason why I did that is because I didn't feel like the auto lane change was making the right decisions at the right time. It would get over to go around slower traffic fine. I think that worked out really well, but I found that it wanted to get back into the slow lane way too fast and if I'm in this relatively little car and I've passed a big semi-trailer, the last thing I wanna do is cut that guy off. And I did that a couple of times and I'm pretty sure that I made that guy pretty angry. So I turned that feature off and I just have it suggest the auto lane change because I have to admit, putting on the turn signal to two, change lanes and putting the turn signal back on to go back to the other lane and having the car make the lane change, that part works flawlessly and I'm betting that if that one feature was in the standard autopilot a lot of people would today would choose not to take the full self-driving option and in fact at one time they did offer that as a feature and it's called enhanced autopilot and it is no longer offered today but there are many Tesla users out there that have it and that is one of the features that they get now the next feature that I want to talk about is auto park and auto park comes in two forms there is parallel parking and there is backing into a space now i've had full self-driving for eight months and i will tell you that this feature is very hit and miss in my book um, it is difficult for it to trigger what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to pull up to a spot and you'll get an indication on the screen that you can park you tap the park or you put it in reverse and tap the park and it will back you in. I have proven that it can work, but it is very hit or miss for me as far as when it will tell me I can even do it. When it does work, it, in my opinion, it is like magic. The parallel parking especially, it, it there was one spot in New Mexico where we're at where it parallel parked into a spot I didn't think was possible. I rolled the dice, I said, okay, Tesla, you say you can do it, then do it, and by golly, it did it. As far as backing into a parking spot, it can do it. I have tried it in a parking lot, but one of the things that it must have is it must have a car on either side of the parking spot. If there are two spots open, or if it's open with just lanes, auto park for parking in a standard parking spot will not work in my based on my experience the next thing on the list is summon and summon comes in two flavors there's standard summon and there is what everyone else seems to be talking about which is smart summon standard summon allows you to move your car forward straight and backward straight a distance the intended purpose of summon is to have it park into a spot that is really tight. And for most people, that might be your garage where you pull in and there's no way for you to open the door once you get into the car. So with summon, you can get out of your car and have the car drive forward into the spot. Now, it isn't just driving forward. It is using the telemetry and the cameras to figure out the right path. So it will steer its way in and it does actually a really good job um, backing out is the same way you will back out and i found that it works pretty well most of the time for me but i haven't used it that often in fact i can't even use it in my garage because there is something that no one seems to talk about with summon which is you have to have the camera seeing where you are going my driveway is on a slope and it's not a huge slope but it is it's an okay slope and when i'm parked on my driveway on that slope the app tells me that summon is not available in my car because it can't see where it's going or at least that's what i assume to next on the list is smart summon smart summon is in my opinion right now a bit of a parlor trick it's a bit of a demonstration it is a bit of a work in progress yes they put the beta on it but the promise if they can pull it off is really cool even elon musk has recently said that smart summon is sometimes useful but mostly just a fun trick but he hopes that things will get better once that the full self-driving features that are out in beta make its way to the smart summon side of things. 
you can pull up in the app and with fear within 250 feet of your car, you can have your car come to you in a parking lot. And I've tried it, I put videos out on it, and it's a very mixed bag as far as what you're getting. Would I trust it today, July 2021? No way. No way would I trust it. But it does appear to be getting better, and I'm hoping that once the full self-driving from version 9 or whatever version we're going to get will allow that whole aspect of it to get a lot better. Because the promise is really great. If I am in a grocery store and I have a whole bunch of groceries with me and it's raining outside, I can theoretically do smart summon and the car will come to me with nobody in the car and I can load my groceries and I can go. But today, if you subscribe today, you're not going to get much and you might find that smart summon doesn't do exactly what you want it to do. Now, my second favorite feature is the last one on the list, um, which is traffic signs and uh, traffic stop signals. When you are in town on autopilot and just standard autopilot, the car does see traffic lights and stop signs, and it will stop the car at those intersections. And that is really nice. But it will also stop the car if the light is green. So you have to pay attention. You'll get an indication on the screen that it is approaching an intersection and you have to give it a indication by pulling down on the stock saying it is green and I'm good to go. Now I'm assuming at some point once the new full self-driving beta comes out that you won't have to do that anymore. But if you do not acknowledge that, your car will stop at a green light. And when you're sitting at a red light and it turns green, a really neat feature is that it'll chime. It'll, it'll see the lights and it will chime back at you saying, hey, it's green. So if you happen to be glancing at your phone, if it's a long light, you're not paying attention, that chime will say, hey, it's time to go. But if you are in autopilot while you're doing that, you'll hear the chime, but it will not move by itself. You have to pull down on the stock and have it go. Now, the only caveat to all of this is if you're following another car. If you're first in the lane, you have to do all of this acknowledgement. But if you are following a car, and I can't tell you what the distance is, is that when you're approaching traffic lights and the car in front of you is going and it's green, it will follow it through. It won't acknowledge or have you acknowledge what's going on. And if you are to stop and it turns green and the car in front of you starts to move, your car will start to move and you don't need to do anything. So what's, and that's pretty much a feature with regular autopilot with the traffic aware cruise control. And it is really a great feature from a, if you're in stop and go traffic. Now that I've explained what full self-driving is and what my experience has been with full self-driving over the last eight months, I'm hopeful that you will find this useful in making your purchase decision on whether or not you want to go with the subscription or not. Uh, if you like this video, I'd appreciate a like, and even better, I'd appreciate a subscribe. We're putting out content all the time, and the quickest way to get notified of that content is hit that subscribe button, and even better, hit the bell icon, and you'll get notified. And finally, if you're looking to pick up a Tesla, and you're just looking at this video to learn about Teslas, I'm not going to talk you out of it. A Tesla is a fantastic piece of technology, the best car I've ever owned. So if you're going to buy that Tesla, don't miss out on those thousand free supercharger miles. And in order to do that, you need to use a referral code at the time of purchase. You can use any referral code, but if you're looking for one, you can use mine in the description below. So until the next video, we'll catch you later.